Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you are all doing well, international break, but we take no breaks, we continue to speak about football, we continue to speak about our beloved Juventus, and today we have different topics to speak about, and I'm sure that you will be really interested, because one is more interesting than the other ones, Canavino and Allegri, the words that made actually a lot of Juventini furious, angry, and worried about the near future of Juventus, three stars, jewels, youth players, to understand if yes or no they will continue with Juve and at what cost. And then Cope Manners that is on all the front pages because yesterday an interview to Telegraph where he spoke about opening the doors to a move away from Atalanta knowing, acknowledging the interest of Juve. Only Juve We speak about all these topics today. Maximum of like if you didn't yet, please continue to subscribe to the channel, continue to support the channel by commenting, by interacting with the channel. It costs you zero and it's helping me so much. Now, yesterday, international break, that's what we start with because I watch a lot of international games. Georgia, Luxembourg, Portugal, Sweden, first half, USA against um, Jamaica before falling asleep, collapsing totally on the coach. This morning I woke up and I watched the result. Congratulations to USA that goes to the final of Nations League. But the game that was really interesting for me was Venezuela, Italia. I know there is a love and hate relationship with Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio, but when Italy is playing, when I hear the national anthem, it's stronger than me. I can only support Italy. So I was watching to support Italy to see the progression of the team of Spalletti that was poor yesterday. Not a great game. It was not really good. The only one that really impressed me was Retegui. That is the total opposite of an Immobile. Immobile, fantastic with Lazio, goes in national team, disaster. Retegui, anonymous with Genoa, and then he goes in national team, wonders. What a strike. Yesterday, what a strike. The two goals are just fantastic eh, from Retegui. Hopefully he can keep that form also in the uh, tournament because we will need him. Otherwise, we have really a problem, but seriously a problem. But anyway, I watch also for our boys to see the progression of Cambiasa first game with Italy. Locatelli, that was playing in a different role. Yesterday also Chiesa to see if yes or no is doing better than when he's playing with Allegri. Because let's be honest at the moment. When we are looking at Juventus, the moment that we are in, usually I'm against international breaks. But this time I believe it was on right time. Going outside of Torino, thinking about something else, being in another environment that is a bit less toxic than what is Juventus at the moment. Well, I was really cursed to see the three of them. And at halftime, I give my judgment about the performance of the three Juventini, being totally objective, that doesn't mean right or wrong, my opinion about the performance of the three, where I was really curious, I don't care about love, hate, you want to defend, you want to attack, no, just objective judgment about their performance of the field, which I did yesterday, and I watched it with eyes of curiosity, Cambiado, first game, I said, mm, he started in a bit shy way in his first appearance. The danger of Venezuela always coming from his side, the partnership with Di Lorenzo is not working that well from the moment that Spalletti is asking him to play a bit more like Juventus, going a bit more central when he have the opportunity, interchanging there, well he's starting to grow, having a bit more confidence, also giving that assist for Retegui first goal. Chiesa playing in a total different way or in his favorite position, but he's playing, according to me, again, too much wide. Why Spalletti, the day before, asked him to play in half spaces, between the lines, playing there, you know, instead of only there, going a bit more centrally, which yesterday he didn't do. He showed extra motivation, a bit more than lately with Juventus, when he went back one time, when he lost the ball, to give some support there in the back of uh, Italy. And then I said, it's only smoke and there is no fire. Locatelli, according to me, the best of the three Juventini on the pitch. He was accurate. He was risking long passes. He was playing passes in first touches, was trying to accelerate the game and a beautiful sense of positioning. Again, this is not about I love, I don't love. First of all, I have a human connection with the tree because I interviewed the tree, so I like all of them. And they are pillars of Juventus, important players from Juventus, so I like the three of them equally. Now, this was my judgment. And this morning I woke up and I was extremely happy because when you read on social network, you don't understand 
what is the performance of Locatelli. I saw a comp of Locatelli, his minutes in the game, and there were equally comments of he's not a good player, he's a bad player, nothing sensational, really bad, he's not a level of Juventus. And then I see the other half that he's saying, you see, fantastic player, exceptional player, you see, far away from Juventus, look how he's playing. I don't understand. I need to understand personally myself. How did Locatelli play? Did he play well or did he play bad? Did he play well because he was far away from Allegri or did he play bad because he's not at the level of Juventus? I don't. I need really to understand it. My judgment was yesterday. He didn't do something. Wow, absolutely not. He did the minimum requested of Locatelli, according to me, a player that is good. Why was he more free yesterday? Because playing in that three. 4-2-1, he played with two in the midfield, there was less pressing on him. Also why? Because Scalvini, Buongiorno, Di Lorenzo are players that can also build from the back. While at Juventus, the three men we have in the defense are lacking a bit in that. So not always he was the only one that could start. So that means that the players from Venezuela, they had to man mark more players and not only double marking on Locatelli. And according to me, with more freedom, he was able to play more, also risking more, also having probably less fear than at Juventus where you miss a ball and it's a total disaster. That was according to me why Locatelli played well yesterday. But when I'm reading experts, Gazzetta dello Sport, Tutto Sport, reporting it, well, they agree with my first half judgment. 6.5 for Locatelli on Gazzetta, 6 for Cambiaso, 5.5 for Chiesa. Exactly the same ranking that I did. Locatelli the best one, Chiesa the worst one. Tutto Sport, exactly the same. 6 Locatelli, 6 Cambiaso, 5.5 for Chiesa. And if you are reading the description, it's more or less what I'm telling you. A Chiesa that is playing wide, that doesn't find the way to go a bit more central, but also to be part of the game. After his shot that went wide, it disappeared from the game. Chiesa that is trying, yes, but is missing a lot of lucidity. And this is the Chiesa that we see ultimately at Juventus. Look at the stats of yesterday, exactly the same. 15 passes succeeded on 21, that's 71%. Four dribbles attempted, zero succession. Six crosses, zero succession. Ground duels, six, only 2-1. Aerial duel, 2-0-1. Possession lost, 18. Chiesa is not doing well. And it's not anymore the excuse of the position that he's playing in. Because he's always playing wide with Juve and with Italy. He's in a moment where he's not doing well. Which is for me not to say, eh, but it's because of Allegri, it's because of Spalletti, it's because of... No, it's just worrying. For my beloved Juventus, it is worrying. And I hope that Chiesa can go back, but it needs to start with him. It needs to start with him and fast because he's 26, because now he come back from that injury that is already okay, but mentally he needs to be better. Otherwise, we will have a lot of difficulties to recuperate Chiesa and I hope we can recuperate him because we have now 10 finals to play to qualify to that Champions League as soon as possible. Because it's crucial, because it's vital. How many times did we repeat it? And now we go towards that second topic that made Juventini yesterday go totally crazy. Scannavino, on Corriere dello Sport of yesterday, you read Vera Juve in tre anni, the real Juve in three years. You see Max Allegri, part of what he said in the Athletic, taken out of context with, with the new format of Champions League, it will be nearly impossible to win it. Guys, guys, first of all, Scannavino never said, and we made a video about it two days ago, the real Juve will be there in three years. He never said that. That was absolutely not the sense of it. He said, with that capital increase that we are finalizing, it will help us to be sustainable, to continue with our project of being there again at, in three years. Speaking as a club Juventus, you know it. You like it, you don't like it. The priority is off the field at the moment. With Juventus, that needs to be again financially break even to have the luxury to do what they want to do again what they want today we can't do what we want and we have put a project in place that we are working he didn't speak about the field the field the only thing that he said is 
we trust and we back Allegri and the players, we have two objectives to reach, qualification to Champions League and Coppa Italia. That's what he said. He didn't speak about Allegri will be there, will not be there next season. Next season, we can't win. We have to wait three years. That's absolutely not what he said. I give you a small example because I want to move on to the other topics. I give you an example of Agnelli Di Conte meeting before he became our coach. It was really clear, and I repeat it so many times on the channel. Plan on three years plan on five years. The plan on three years is to win the Scudetto again in three years. In five years, being in the top eight, top four, competing for Champions League. That was the plan. The plan was clear. Antonio comes, he wins immediately, accelerating the plan. So next year, maybe we have another coach. Maybe we win, we accelerate the plan. But the plan do not change. And these were the problems with Conte and Juventus, where Conte said that famous sentence, you can't eat in a restaurant of 100 euro if you have only a budget of 10 euro. Why? Because yes, we accelerated and yes, we slightly changed it, our objectives, our plans slightly, but the big plan of three, five years remained the same. We can't go crazy because we won earlier, because what matters the most is put Juventus again on the card on the map as being a sustainable club, which we were in trouble, and we did. And Antonio, Antonio Conte was not happy, he left. Now, our plan in winning on the field can go faster already next year, if the stars are aligned, if we don't miss our choices from possibly the next coach, the players that we will sign, we can accelerate. But Juventus sustainable is a three plan. And that's what he said. That's what he said. Then, about Allegri, what do we want to do here? We want to lie. We want to lie. We want to say that Juventus next year should win, is obliged to compete for winning the Champions League. You know what's the reality? The reality is whatever Max Allegri says, whatever Juventus as a club says, if they are not saying we sack the coach tomorrow or Allegri says, I dismiss myself, I give my dismissal. And if Juventus doesn't say, we will win the Scudetto, that's our objective next year and we will do everything to win it. We will do everything to win the Champions League. If they are not saying that, people will not be happy. People will not be happy because at the moment, that's the only thing that we want to hear. But is it realistic? That's another story. How many people told me, Beppe, why are you celebrating the fact that we will go in FIFA World Cup? Because we will be humiliated. Beppe, why do we even want to go in Champions League? Because with the team that we have, with the coach that we have, with the way of playing that we have, we are not ready to compete. And now you're expecting Max Allegri that is saying we will try to win the Champions League next year. The reality is that we can't because there is a change of formula in the new thing, because there is a gap that is coming bigger and bigger and bigger. Why was I sad yesterday? I made a video of 34 minutes long, explaining all the details, and then I said, maybe people, they do not want to listen to it. Probably people, they don't want to listen to it. At the moment, people, they don't want to listen to explanations. They don't want to be confronted with the reality. The only thing that they want to hear at the moment is change and go back to Juve DNA that is winning, winning, winning. Now, not in two years, not in three years, not a project, not a path, not being confronted with the reality. As Canavino told you in August already, Juventus is in difficulty, but we are doing everything to go there. And one of the big things that Juventus has done already, anticipating everyone in Italy, is that project Next Gen, where yesterday James Horncastle wrote a fantastic, fantastic article about Next Gen. Fantastic article about Next Gen that I read three times. Long, but fantastic. I have the subscription to The Athletic. I wrote everything. It is in English. So no chances to misunderstand or whatever. Go and read it if you have the opportunity. But I was extremely sad because you know how many people spoke in that interview? Four. Miretti, Brambilla, that is the coach of the next gen, Muharemovic, playing with next gen, and Max Allegri. Four person. Did you read some sentences of Muharemovic? No. Brambilla? No. 
Miretti, I saw one sentence, that's it. But Allegri, his words were taken and put there. Because at the moment, that's the only thing that is interesting people. Attacking, attacking, attacking. Whatever he says, even if it's correct, even if it's true, even if it's the same that you already know, we take it out. What did he say at a certain moment? The reality. By now, it's impossible to close the financial gap between Premier League and Serie A. So we need keep going in this direction, working on youth development on the next gen. This is a reality. Do you believe that Juventus really want to play only with the next gen team? Do you believe that Agnelli, the last press conference of his goodbye, really believed that it was nice and fun to have a team made of 50% in the next five years that would be made 50% of next gen players? No, not because it's fun, not because it's glamorous, not because we want to become the new Ajax, because it's a reality, because you can't compete with Premier League since long already, because Italy is not advancing. Look at the state of the Italian players yesterday. It was dramatic. Spalletti, that is not my favorite coach, but what do you want to point finger at? This is the tools, the material that he has. In that article, they're speaking that it will go worse and worse and worse in Italy in the next few years because of obesity with the children that is growing, because lack of interest more and more and more in football, because Italy is it, it has a demographic geographic problem with older people and less younger people. It's a lot of problems, but Italy is doing nothing. The only club that is doing something is Juventus. And instead of praising that fantastic article, we are taking out of context two sentences and we are killing it. And that's not okay. That's why yesterday I was extremely frustrated. I will keep calm, otherwise we go again uh, towards a 30-minute video, which I don't want to do. And that's a bit what I tell you. Some people yesterday, they were watching Venezuela, Italy, with the only scope to criticize or to defend Allegri. And this is wrong. And this is, according to me, wrong. We speak a lot about next gen. Well, there are three players that I wanted to introduce. Ken Anildis, Dean Huysen, and Sule. The last two, they spoke, and we'll go through their words in a second, really fast. Ken Anildis. Ken Anildis is an important player. In Gazzetta dello Sport yesterday, they were saying contract extension and possibly even the number 10. If we want to do that, we will have to take bold decisions, important decisions about a coach that will probably even let him play more. If Ke Ken Anildis, we want to keep him, we need to take bold decisions, not only with the coach, but also with a coach that knows that Keza and Anildis are probably playing the same position. What are we doing now? Are we keeping Chiesa? Are we investing on Ken and Yildiz? Both of them, can they play together in a 4-2-3-1? One will have to be sacrificed as a number 10 or on the right side on the field, but they can't play both on the same position. And that's important. What about Dean Huysen? Yesterday, I saw big titles on Gazzetta, on uh, social media. I come back to Juve to stay there really long, for a long period, because they believed in me. I read the article. He never said that. He never said that. He spoke about Juventus. Yes. What did he say about Juventus? He said, look, Rama, there is no option to buy. But in football, in football, I have learned something that you never know what can happen. What is sure is that I will go back to Juventus. I will show myself a bit available. I will show and I will be available for Juventus. It's the first big club that trusted me. I have only gratitude for Juventus. That's what he said. That's what he said. Then, listen, uh, speaking about Spain and the Netherlands, he said, I went to the Netherlands when I used because that was the club that offered me to play with the national team, but I had always Spain in mind. When I had my passport, I had no doubt I went to Spain. That was my choice, hard choice. I chose Rama because it was an ambitious project. You can't say no to Mourinho. He says about Spain, do I dream to go in first team of Spain? Obviously, I hope it. Of course, it will depend on how the season will end. And there are also the Olympic Games. As you see, he says, as you see, my future is more or less open. 
What does that mean? And we know it, huh? and I'm absolutely not blaming the kid. Harrison, can we blindly trust that he will be there for the five next 10 years? No, because it's a player that is thinking correctly about himself. Idol Sergio Ramos. You don't know what can happen with Harrison that now even changed agent, let his agent go and he's going with his father. If we propose him, if we offer him, if we consider that he's ready to play as a starter, probably he will stay at Juve. How long? We don't know. Look what happened with the league. So pay attention. Huh? Next gen, what do we do? What choices are you doing? Maybe we will sacrifice to have more money, Huysen, because we know that on long term it will not be a Juve player that we can catch in today instead of tomorrow. Or maybe we can convince him to stay because he... So pay attention. Huh? The same for Sule, that I love. You know how much I love Huysen, how much I love Yildiz, how much I love Sule. Yesterday, Sule said, I would like to have a chance at Juve. For sure, I would love to. But if you give me the choice to choose, I would love to play in Premier League one day because it's the best league in the world. I would love to play there. Look, he's fighting for relegation at the moment and he was totally chill, tranquilo, speaking from the national team of uh, Argentina under 23, speaking about Messi, speak about this with a big smile. He's fighting for rele relegation with Frosinone to tell you that at Frosinone, the stress level is not the same. You can be relaxed, you don't care, he's thinking about where he will go next season and so on and so on. He didn't speak about Frosinone at all. Just to tell you that I love Sule. I would love Sule to be at Juventus. I would love to give him a chance, but I don't know if he is ready for Juventus or not, because Juventus is different than Frosinone. If you're looking at the last games of Sule, he lost himself a bit. So he needs to go back to the continuity that he was showing in the first part of the season. You see on the first pages, turn Coop Manners. Juve Coop, passi avanti. Juve Coop, they go. There is possibility. You will need 45 millions. And the club is thinking about selling the youth. And that's the big link with all that I was telling you. Yildiz, Ealing Jr., Sule, Heisen. Are we convinced? Are we sure that these players are at the level of Yamal, Kubarsi, just to cite some players? Are we convinced that they have the values, they have the expertise, they have the potential to stay and be starters of this Juventus yet? Are we sure about that? Do we really want to invest in next gen with the players that we have or not? Or do we need so much money that we are obliged to sacrifice them because they are the only one that have a bit of mercato? Juve que pasa avanti. If it's 45 million euro, we can even discuss. If it is what I hear from other sources, 60 million euro is the initial request of Atalanta and they can drop to 55, 50 million euro, we have a problem. Cope chiama la Juve. What happened? Yesterday, Cope Manners in the Telegraph said, I already told Atalanta that this would be my last season with the Bergamaschi, with the team of Gasperini, and then I would leave. Of course, I would be lying if I told you that I don't know about interest of Juventus. I know about it, like I know about other clubs that are also interested to me. So he's opening the door of leaving Atalanta. I tell you, it's a player that I really like, a player that I really love. But it's a player, and I will be probably controversial today, that I would think twice before signing him, especially for 45, 50, 60 million euros, don't even speak about it. That would be, according to me, a big mistake of Juve. For 60 million euros, it's a big mistake. Even if you are able to put Sule in it, it's not worth 60 million euros. The only way that I see Coop Manners coming at Juve if, is if you can't continue with Rabiot. If you can't continue with Rabiot, you can potentially think about the Coop Manners. That's it. Otherwise, it would be too much money for a player that we need, yes, because he's a beautiful player, but it's probably not worth it. I would not sacrifice Sule to lower the 60 million euro. I could possibly sacrifice Sule if it is to lower the 45 million euro request. And there we have different because with 60 million euro, sacrificing Huysen, sacrificing Sule, I would think twice because there are other things that we can do. I give you a stat. 
this season, in seven games, we had more than 55% ball possession. You know how many we won? Two. On seven games with 55% more than 55% ball possession, we only won two. What do we need? Do we need physicality? Do we need defense? No. We need creativity. We need players that know what to do with the ball. And that's why I'm happy when I see Gudmundsson yesterday, by the way, hat trick with Iceland. When I see Samarsic, when I see a Ferguson, when I see Mitaj that can play there on the left, when I see Dorgu that can play there on the left. With 60 million euro, with 80 million euro, sacrificing a player, yeah, but then go towards really a team that can play with the ball. A team that can do something with the ball, that can increase that creativity with another coach, with the same coach, whatever, but I want players that can do something with the ball. Otherwise, we have a problem. Otherwise, we have a problem. I want a Calafiori that can also start building from the back. That's what really matters to me today. Instead of a Copenhagen that is a beautiful player that I really like and I will even be happy Probably not buy the shirt, maybe even buying the shirt of Copenhagen if he joins you because he's a really strong player. But do we need to go to invest the money that we don't have today? Sacrificing all for one player? I would think twice. I would think twice. Samarsic, Ferguson, cheaper. Merino, cheaper. Calafior. You, you have a lot that you can do with a lot of men. We can't fail for the future. That's what I wanted to say. It's a long video. It's less than 34 minutes, but we spoke about so much things. So, maximum of like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Grazie, forza. You bet.